Hello and welcome to the Thor Guide. This guide will be split into three sections. The first section will be on building, the second section will be on Thor's passive and his abilities, and the third section will be on fighting and mechanical tips and tricks. So, let's get started with the first section, building. To start off with, you're going to want to get Assassin's Blessing or Attacker's Blessing if you're playing a different mode than Conquest. Then, you have three options for your starter items generally. The first option is Mace. This will build into either Jotun's Wrath or Brawler's, but Mace. The second option is Round Shield. The third option is Enchanted Buckler. Either one of these three for a start is fine. Then, generally, I like to get a Healing Potion and a Mana Potion um, with the Mace start. If you've got one of these Shield starts, you'll want to get an extra Healing Potion. And that's the starters covered. Now the core items. First off, Warrior Tabby. You're going to want to finish that first. Then, if they have a lot of healing that will um, be impactful early game, it might be a good idea to get Brawlers. Personally, even if they have some healing, I still like to get Yothan's Wrath. Then after that, I'll get Transcendence. Now, if you've done one of the um, shield starts, if you've done the round shield start, you can either get Shifter Shield, which is the most common one you're going to get, or Void Shield, if you're slightly ahead by the time you're going to buy this item. If you do the Enchanted Buckler start, you'll want to get Ancelia most of the time. You can get Runic Shield, although Ancelia is probably better for the cooldown and the extra 5 power you get. So those are the core items. I'll just build Yotun's Wrath and Transcendence back. Now we're on to the more situational items. This is where you're going to have to start making decisions based on how you're performing in the game and how well the game is going. If you're getting ahead, items like Hydra's Lament or Void Shield can be very good here. So if you're ahead, you would get Hydra's. You can also here in this slot or any of these last three slots all these items that I'm going to cover are in these last three slots the order does not matter here your main damage has come from these three items right here which is Jotun's Wrath, Warrior Tabby and Transcendence so Hydra's Lament is the first one the another one, Shifter Shield obviously if you didn't get this originally you can pick it up here um, as I mentioned Brawlers um, you can pick this up here if the healing is starting to become a problem or if and enemies picked up meditation for some reason. Um, you can also get Titan's Bane um, if you're going to be doing a lot of damage towards tanks or the back line have got um, some defense. Also any of the items in this tree here are going to be good. Spirit Robe is completely fine on Thor, Mantle of Discord is, Magi's Cloak is very good if um, you're getting sort of focused by hard CC that would cancel your three which I will talk about. Um, Hide the Urchin as well is good. Um, other items, obviously, you can pick up Ancelia. Something to be careful of is that a lot of these items have cooldown reduction, so you don't generally want to overcap it too much. Remember, the cap is 40% on cooldown reduction. You can go up to 50% if it's necessary, but when you're starting to get towards 60%, that is when you're really wasting gold. You can also pick up Runic Shield as well. Um, as I mentioned before, Void Shield, um, you can pick this up. Um, Pridwin as well, that's a completely fine item. Uh, either two of the hammers, Blackthorn or Runeforged Hammer, can be good as well. For an extra power spike, um, you can get Heartseeker as well. You would generally want this sixth item or when you sell boots, so this is the one where you have to really think about the positioning in the build. It's a very high cost, and if you don't have the damage up already, if you don't have the physical power, it, will, it won't be as effective as it should be. And you can also get something like a winged blade if slurs are troubling you as well. Some general building advice, because I know throwing a lot of items at you, are uh, don't go glass cannon, because you're going to be in the middle of either the backline or just the fights in general, um, and you will be taking quite a bit of damage. That's just the nature of Thor's abilities. Hybrid items, obviously, as I talked about, such as Shifter Shield and Seely, or items that are hybrid and auras, such as Void Shield or Runic Shield, these are going to be very strong items on Thor because of the nature of his abilities and his passive. 
And that is pretty much it for the building section. Now on to Thor's passive and abilities. I won't be covering his basic attack progression because he has none. It's just one on every basic attack. His passive, he gains physical power for each god within 30 units of him. This stacks up to 3 times and each stack is 10 power. So if you're in the middle of 3 enemies, that's 30 power. It's a pretty simple passive. Um, you don't generally utilise it that much. Um, there is one trick that I will teach you with it. But apart from that, it's not generally that useful. It's just something that is nice. It's a nice bonus. You don't have to worry about it really. Then on to Thor's first ability. Let's go up to level 20. First ability, Mjolnir's Attunement. He will throw a hammer and it acts sort of like a boomerang. It'll go out and then it'll come back to you. The first hit will always deal whatever damage is here. Um, obviously after protections have applied it will be slightly less, but it will be dealing this damage. Now, as you can see, it goes once and then it does a return hit as well. It does a first hit and a return hit. So on the first hit, it will deal this damage. On the second hit, if you sit in minions or jungle camps, it will only be 80% of this. If it's on a god, it will deal 200%, so it will be double this damage. So effectively, you're getting three times whatever damage is here. You can also press either one, or obviously whatever you have this bound to again, to teleport to it. It's pretty simple. And you're going to want to be maxing this second. In the past, you did max this um, first. You can still max this first if you want. However, um, your three is best to max first because of the clear. But your one will still be deal like will still do the most damage of all your abilities. To gods at least. Then his next ability, Tectonic Rift, you're going to want to be maxing this third. You will place down a player made wall and it will stun enemies that are hit by it. It's pretty simple. His third ability, Berserk Barrage, he'll spin around dealing two ticks of this damage, which is here, the first damage that's shown here. And then on the third hit, he will do a semicircle. I'll just release my mouse so you can see. So if you were to imagine a horizontal line across here, it will sort of deal damage in front of there. So anything above this line that I'm sort of drawing will be doing the third hit of damage, which is the most damaging hit. And it's obviously displayed here. Um, something to note as well that Thor is knock-up immune for the duration, although every other hard type of hard TC, mesmerizers, stuns, silencers, these things can cancel it. Although, as you can see, it's quite a fast ability, so it's a lot more difficult than it was in the past to cancel. Now on to Thor, um, you're going to want to be maxing this first, by the way, because it's the best for clear, and it's got, as you can see, a very low cooldown. This is with 30% cooldown if I was to get the max amount of cooldown. As you can see, 4.8 seconds, so pretty much 5 seconds. That is a very, very short cooldown for something that does quite a lot of damage. Now onto his ult, obviously, Anvil of Dawn. He is CC immune in the wind-up time. Um, and when he lands, he will um, do a stun and do damage in the landing location. Something to notice, after you have maxed the three first, then the one second, you will be, um, you can then start putting extra points into your ult. You're only going to want to have one point in your wall and one point in your ult. Um, and then after you've maxed your three and your one, then you can start putting points into your ult if you want. If you're starting to hit it a lot more, if you're, if you're using the damage of it. If not, you can just straight up max the two third. And then just start, and then for your final four levels, just completely max your ult. I'll just demonstrate it. So CC immune in the wind-up time. You can see the circle here, you can move it around. This is called a semi-global ult. And then you'll land, stun the enemy, and deal damage. Pretty simple. And that is it for Thor's passive and abilities. Now on to Thor's fighting and mechanical tips and tricks. First of all, the question you might have is, what do I mean by mechanics when referring to using abilities and basic attacks? Well, 
in Smite there's two different definitions of mechanics. The first definition, which won't be the one that I'm talking about, this definition refers to how the game actually works, more of the coding behind it if you will. So some examples are the order in which different types of penetration are applied. So as you can see here, on this maze tree, you can see um, an item like Jotun's Wrath has 10 physical penetration. This is known as flat penetration. As you can see, Titan's Bane has a percentage. Now, the way that Smite works, the percentage penetration is always applied first, and then the flat penetration. Another example of this is um, how um, when you have towers and phoenixes up, they will give the titan a certain amount of health and also I'm pretty sure they also give the titan power as well that's why it's generally a good idea to get all of the towers down before you start killing the titan um, you can kill the titan with one or two phoenixes down obviously three phoenixes down will be when the titan is at, like completely at its weakest now this definition I am not referring to in this section the second definition is the one that I'm going to be referring to, and that is known as player mechanics. And pretty much, it's your skill with a mouse and keyboard, or a control if you're playing on console, and how that translates into what you can do in the game. The most common example of this is auto attack cancelling, which I showed in my Thanatos guide a lot. So, an auto attack cancel is using an ability quickly before or after um, a basic attack so as you can see here obviously I did a basic attack initially which is the white damage you can see there and then I use my three after and you'll see that as orange damage okay it just cancels the animation and that is a mechanic if you can do that you have some mechanical skill um, this can also be influenced by game knowledge an example of this is, as I showed in my Thanatos guide, and also that I'll show, and that I showed in my Mercury guide, and in this guide, um, on certain gods' ultimates. So, Thor's ult, if you, um, when you left click to start heading towards the ground, let me just turn on reduce cooldown. When you left click to start heading towards the ground, you can turn in midair to face a position a certain position when you land so for instance if i was to want to face this way and do a 180 i would turn my camera in midair and i would land facing here and obviously you saw thor's um body kind of like have a delay on it as soon as he lands and turns but you will actually be facing this direction whether you see it in the character animation or not and those are examples of mechanics so Thor's abilities appear quite simple to use at first, but he, he has some of the most difficult mechanics and combos to pull off consistently. Okay, you can pull them off, okay, just in a controlled environment like this, but pulling them off in game takes a lot more skill. So what do I mean by Thor's abilities seeming simple? Okay, obviously he throws a hammer in a straight line. It does a hit on the way out and a hit back. You can teleport to it. And then his two is just a straight line stun. And, it and he puts down a wall. His three, he spins around and does damage. His all he goes up in the air and then lands down. They all appear very simple. But with using basic attacks in between certain abilities and knowledge of how the character works, you can actually achieve some pretty smart things that will increase your damage a lot. So as you can see on Thor's passive, I'll actually go around here. If I'm out of range of these Odin bots, these Odin bots count as enemies. Remember how this stacks up to three times. If I go near in the range of one, you can see I get one stack. If I'm in between two, I will have two stacks. Each of these sort of thirds of this triangle will represent a stack. So for instance, if you're in the jungle and you don't have sight on an enemy, if you look at this passive and you notice one of the sections lighting up, you know that there is an enemy on the other side of these walls somewhere. Okay, this can help with invades, or if someone is chasing you, to know what direction they're coming from. Obviously, if somebody's chasing you, the best thing to do is to stare at your map, which I have here, but you might have in the top right-hand corner. 
And that's just a neat little trick with his passive. That's really all you will ever pay attention to with his passive though. Now on to something um, to teach you how to poke with Thor. So there's two general ways to poke with Thor. Two and one. This allows you to guarantee both hits of the hammer and deal the most amount of damage. The other one is to use your one first and then your two. This is better if the enemy has diminishing returns on. Um, a stack of, well, at least one stack of diminishing returns on them. Check out my Mercury Guide for an explanation on diminishing returns. But simply, something like that, it still guarantees both hits because they're stunned. Um, a close range version of this is to do um, an auto attack, one, um, auto attack, two, auto attack, three. So I'll do a slow version of it first. So this is poking at close range. Auto attack, one, auto attack, two, auto attack, three. And then I'll show you a fast version of it. There. And obviously after all these combos you can just hold left click and keep hitting them with auto attacks. To make a more advanced version of the combo at long range, you can do two plus your one, so you do stun first, then your one, and then you teleport as soon as the second hit hits, and do an auto attack as soon as you teleport to it. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, as you can see I went past him there, so I had to turn at the last second. Um, that will happen sometimes if you get both hits on. Um, the second hit, because the hammer is obviously its own sort of like projectile, as soon as it touches this Odin bot, so imagine I was a hammer, as soon as it touches the Odin bot, that counts as the second hit of damage. So if you were to teleport to it here, you would actually land on the opposite side of the Odin bot, not this side. So I'll show you it again. Two, one, hit. Now, have, do you do that hit when you teleport? You can cancel that into your three. Okay. Now, something to note with this combo is that if you're fed, it will probably one-shot them when you have Hydra's Lament. If not, it will do at least half their health, or well over half their health, if you're about the same XP and gold. Something very important to note is that this combo is a full commit combo onto somebody. All of your abilities, apart from your ult, will be on cooldown when you teleport, and you all after you've used your three. If the enemy is already stunned, obviously, you don't have to use the wall at first, you can just teleport and do that. Now, I will show you Thor's ult combo to one-shot somebody. I'll just get... Yeah, I'm a stack, and I will just get a bunch more damage. Okay, so I'll just put a Neath bot down. So this combo, I will just sort of tell you what it is first. So first of all, you're obviously going to want to ult, okay? Because this is an ult combo. So you're going to ult, as soon as you land, you do one auto attack, cancel it into your one, do another auto attack, cancel it into your two, another auto attack, cancel it into your three, and then just keep on doing auto attacks. And I'll show you this version. dead now obviously this neath bot is a lot like has very low hp so i didn't even need to do the auto attack in three at the end to kill her she died from it um, which can happen especially when you have heart seeker because it is so much damage this is a glass cannon build um which you generally you know, remember you don't want to do this on thor even though you will one shot somebody you will get one shot when you land as well um now the other combo um, with this is if you were to ult and you see how I landed like essentially towards Neath, if Neath was to land here and I had to do an auto attack when I came out, this isn't hitting her. Just kill her. So as you can see there, I wasn't in auto attack range. You will have to move towards the enemy when you land and do an auto attack. This does change the combo slightly. 
This just means that the auto attack that you would have done before the two, you don't do. So you do four, auto attack one, two, auto attack three, and then auto attacks. So you ult in, get them on the edge. Your mother must be proud of you. Dead. Now, for ulting in conquest, you have two sort of situations that are very critical as to where you will ult. If you're trying to steal the fire giant, okay, you will ult from your back XP camps on that side of the map. If you're trying to steal gold fury, you ult from your red camps on that side of the map. If you're trying to gank either of the side lanes, ult from gold fury for the dual lane obviously, and ult from inside fire giant for solo lane. Those will sort of um, be the furthest away that you can effectively ult, um, and it will have sort of the least chance of notifying the enemy that you're coming. Now, another thing to note with Falls One is when you throw it and you teleport, you will all you will remain facing the direction that you um, are facing. So if I was to throw it and turn around, so if I was to just do it normally, I'm obviously still facing these Odin bots. Or if I was to throw it, turn around and then press one, I will stay facing that free fight over there. As you can see, I'm stayed facing it. That's sort of important to know if you're trying to teleport to someone and you go past them. Um, you can either turn at the last second or if you want to really um, try something risky, you can do that and you will remain sort of facing in their direction. Generally, it's not that important of a thing to know. It can be good in certain scenarios, but not really that many. Now, in terms of Thor's walls, this is where Thor gets really, really difficult. And to be honest, most of this is going to come down to experience in team fights and how team fights work. Just to give you sort of a brief overview of most team fights, generally the solo laner and jungler will be the ones diving the backline, and the support can either dive the backline or peel for their own backline. Most of the time, supports, especially in sort of lower levels, will pretty much always be peeling for the backline. So you can imagine at the back of your team, there's three people: the ADC, the mage, and then your support. And you um, and at the front are sort of getting to the back of their team you have the jungler and the solo laner so when you're trying to break up fights for instance um, you will have to pay attention to the fight a lot to know where and when to wall now in a gank it's much easier to know when you're going to wall because you're obviously going to want the wall to cut them off now people will try and risk hitting the stun okay if you're not confident that you can hit the stun on them, say, you know, the enemy is very good at juking, trust me, it is always better to wall them off than to try and stun them. Okay? Now, if you stun them, obviously, that's a bonus. And especially, so, we'll pretend that the right side of this Odin is where his own tower is, and the left side is where my team's tower is. If I was coming in for a gank, the best possible sort of wall, wall placement would be something like that. Now you might ask why a diagonal? Well a diagonal will force this Odin bot to move all the way around to get back to his tower. He will have to come towards my team and then go around. Which obviously if he's getting low is not going to work. Now if you just want to sort of section off the fight so you can force them to be out of position just wall them off. Nine times out of ten it's better to wall off than to try and risk the stun. Something to note with the wall is this hitbox that it has is incredibly deceiving. This Odin bot right now is not highlighted. He's not highlighted as target. You see the one in the middle is. The one in the middle should be getting stunned. The one behind me shouldn't because it's not in the hitbox. But look, he got stunned. Um, now this can help if somebody goes on you. Um, if somebody were to see like a dodge you were to teleport to you. It might be just a good idea, even if she's sort of behind you, to turn in her general direction and just throw the wall down. Don't worry about its placement, just throw it down to get the stun off and then obviously teleport away. 
if you're running away from someone, again, like say this Odin bot was to chase me, I would just do quick 180 and try and send them. Obviously, I missed that there. I'll do it again. Obviously, 180. There you go. Um, now, you're three as well. If somebody's chasing you but they're quite low, obviously, if you hit, that's only going to do two hits of damage. But if you need the third hit to hit them, turn at the last second and get the third hit off and then turn back. Um, this can just be nice for a bit of extra damage. Something um, for fights as well. Because you're not going to be, you know, building a build like this, which is going to be a glass cannon build, and you won't one shot um, the enemy backliner like that, dead. Um, you're going to want to try and hit multiple people. Generally, the two best targets for you are going to be their mage and their ADC. If you can hit both of those teams in both of those characters, sorry, in a team fight you've done an amazing ult. If you can hit three people, which would most likely be whoever's peeling for their backline, um, and then the actual backline, the mage and the ADC, if you can hit all three of those, that's an insane ult, and you know, you're probably going to win your team fight if your team follows up on it. And that is pretty much it for the Thor guide. There's nothing really much else to talk about. You can play him in solo if you want, um, you would obviously just build a lot more um, of a defensive build and you would focus on being a CC bot with your 2 and your ult. Well that's it for the Thor Guide, I hope you enjoyed watching, I hope you learned something, and I hope you see, to see you doing um, well with Thor in my games. Thanks for watching.